Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is April the 22nd, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Anthony Joshua, who has a challenging fight coming up, Right, Kubrat Pulev is older, but I get the feeling Joshua, who's big and clunky, is going to have a problem with Kubrat Pulev's jab. I think Joshua is going to go for the KO as Vladimir Klitschko did. But as I've said here many times online, Vladimir Klitschko was a fighter who learned a lot of skills over a lot of years. He's years into his career before he meets up with Emmanuel Stewart right then he really did figure out certain things spacing um how to rough you up without really throwing body shots right you don't recall a lot of vladimir klitschko hard shots to the body he also learned how to wear you down lean on you have his hand behind your neck and stuff like that i think anthony joshua is just learning that stuff right? Um, Anthony Joshua hasn't had the long road, hasn't had the big losses that Vladimir Klitschko had, right? Klitschko, let's be clear here, lost to Ross Purity in his backyard. He gets destroyed by Corey Sanders. Understand, that fight is only a two-round fight, right? By contrast, even though Andy Ruiz did destroy Anthony Joshua, that fight went a few rounds. I believe that fight went seven rounds. Let's also not forget Lehman Brewster against Vladimir Klitschko, the first time they fought. Right? Klitschko's in control of the fight, then seems to have a panic attack, I'm not kidding, in the middle of the fight. Well, the bottom line is some fighters get better after they've had car crashes. Right? They make mistakes, they do what's necessary to rededicate themselves and to improve on the mistakes they made. Right? I believe Vladimir Klitschko, when he fights Kubrat Pulev, who is a very tough fighter, and let's remember, that's the only fight Pulev has lost. Right? I believe Vladimir Klitschko knew exactly how to time Pulev's jab. Right? I also believe he was in control of the moment. When Pulev gets drop the first time and gets off the canvas he to prove to Vladimir Klitschko that he's ready for him he actually sticks his tongue out at Vladimir Klitschko and um, you know stands on one leg Klitschko total professional at that point didn't get caught up in the moment much more mature for that fight than Joshua is right now understand I feel Joshua beats Deontay Wilder I've said that here in prior videos. I believe Joshua is one of the biggest punchers I've seen at heavyweight, right? He's a George Foreman type guy where every punch is hard, right? Joshua, you know, very hard puncher, very talented fighter, no question about it. I just don't feel that he's where Vladimir Klitschko was. When Klitschko beat Kubrat Pulev, right? That Klitschko is an older Klitschko who had had car crashes. Who had changed trainers. Who had changed his center of gravity, right? Used to lean forward, now he's leaning back. Who started figuring out timing. Who knew distance. I don't believe that's Anthony Joshua right now. So... With all of that said, Joshua has a tough fight against Kubrat Pulev. I expect him to win it, right? Pulev's in his later 30s. Joshua is, you know, a younger man with a bigger punch. Joshua has the benefit of the Vladimir Klitschko film. He can sit down and watch it. Joshua's game is similar to Klitschko's, only without Klitschko's wide understanding, right? But... Let's just say, I am somewhat surprised that Joshua is commenting on Deontay Wilder, who just suffered his first loss of his career, 
to Tyson Fury. Joshua has said that Wilder doesn't know how to fight on his back foot. Now let me invite you to look at a specific fight film that I believe discredits that. It's the fight in which Wilder wins the title. Right? He beats Bermain Stavern the first time they fight. Right? You remember the second fight? First round KO. Wilder actually outboxes Stavern. Now Stavern's a potted plant. Stavern, Stavern moves like Andy Ruiz. In other words, a guy like Joshua would destroy Stavern. Kind of like how um, the 2016 Olympic silver medalist from the UK did, Joe Joyce, right? But understand, in that fight, Wilder, who I understand is a different guy in the gym, is actually on his back foot operating behind a jab, right? Here's the wrinkle. He can't do that against a fast-footed opponent like a Tyson Fury. Understand, he has no back foot against Tyson Fury because Tyson Fury has arguably the best feet in the division, right? Fury, for a big man, a 6'9 guy, moves extremely well. So when you're in the ring with a guy who can just move wherever he wants, if you're in the ring with Manny Pacquiao, those back foot skills that might have worked against Andy Ruiz aren't going to work against a guy who can just cut the ring off on you. Lomachenko, another guy who moves extremely well. You start, you know, hitting a jab and backing away thinking you have space, and guess what? The guy slips the jab and the guy's right there. That's what Tyson Fury brought to the table. So, I am intrigued. Understand, in terms of paydays, if Tyson Fury beats Wilder a second time and then decides that he doesn't want to fight Joshua, and I believe he would love to fight Joshua, but if he avoided Joshua, that Deontay Wilder-Joshua fight, especially if it's in the UK, where Joshua is the undisputed box office king of the heavyweight division, Right? I believe that fight would be huge. But here's the problem. Let me invite you in on a different Deontay Wilder film. It's in my favorites folder. It's his loss to Tyson Fury. Right now, let's be clear. Boxing's a tough business. Right? Let me pick one of the best fighters I've ever seen has a huge run where he's beating people like, you know, Virgil Hill, Mike McCallum. I mean, great fighters. And he's making it look easy. And that's Roy Jones. But understand, boxing's tough. The human body, I don't think we fully understand it. Right? We think we do. We always think we do. As they did in the 19th century when you had James Garfield die right? Doctors we know today could have saved his life, didn't know what they were doing. Years later, you had turn of the century, William McKinley, U.S. President, die. Doctors could have saved his life. Didn't know what they were doing, right? I'm just telling you that fighters decay at times quickly. Now, Roy Jones went through a period of time where he had the fastest hands of boxing. Explosive power. He goes through a round against Vinny Pazienza where he, according to CompuBox, did not get hit with a punch. Right? He's doling out all kind of punishment. Pazienza, who came to fight, couldn't even land a punch on him. Right? He fights James Tony. Tony looks like He's in the Matrix or something, right? Jones is moving. Tony just looks slow. Jones was fast. Jones was athletic. Jones was such a freak athlete that Jones reached the point where he would play basketball. I'm not kidding. He would play basketball on the day of his fights. HBO, when they were in the boxing game, 
would have films of Roy Jones running up and down playing basketball. Then, that evening, Roy Jones would hop in the ring for an HBO event against a ranked contender, and Jones would destroy him. Right? Jones, of course, famously goes up to the heavyweight division, fights a guy who beat Evander Holyfield, John Ruiz. Right? And it's just too fast for him. Was a freak athlete at the time. Well, let me just say this. He fights Antonio Tarver a second time. This is the boxing business. Tarver was one of those KG veterans. Right? Tarver, excellent fighter. The reason Tarver was a professional fighter was, according to legend, he saw Roy Jones on TV and he thought, I can beat this guy. This is when Roy was in the Olympics, right? I'm not kidding. So, they fight a second time. Tarver KOs Roy Jones early. It was a huge upset. Even though Tarver was highly regarded, it was a huge upset because Roy Jones at that point was the best pound for pound in boxing. Put it this way, he was on the short list. If you didn't believe he was the best, if you thought Floyd Mayweather was the best back then, even the Mayweather crowd would have to concede, well, who's on the short list? Roy Jones, right? <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. Roy was never the same, right? Don't get me wrong. I love Roy as a boxing commentator, right? Roy is insightful. Roy you know, knows the sport. Roy at times sounds encyclopedic. Sometimes when he's in the booth, especially some of those years at HBO, he seemed to be the guy in the booth who had the most common sense, who knew what was really happening in the ring. But let's just say after that Antonio Tarver KO, he was never the same. By that I mean, and let's be clear here, the reflexes weren't the same. Right? He still had that left hook. He still had the left hook. But he wasn't the Roy Jones who could match you in terms of reflexes and athleticism. When he fights Joe Calzaghe, and understand, that's years ago. That's like 2008 or something like that. Calzaghe is noticeably faster than Roy Jones. Right, you're looking at that fight and you're thinking, wow, is, is this Roy Jones? Right, whatever happened on the KO punch from Antonio Tarver changed Jones's life. He wasn't the same guy after that. That's common in boxing. Right, when I was a kid, I remember I saw Jerry Quarry, a guy who at one point beat Ernie Shavers, right? And Jerry was a pretty tough fighter. Jerry even fought Ali. And Jerry was in there looking tough for a few rounds against Ali. Suddenly you notice Jerry had slowed down dramatically. Dramatically. Right? Jerry didn't look like Jerry anymore. The reflexes were gone. The balance was gone. Well, what I want you to do is to revisit the Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight, right? I'm telling you by the third round, in the film clip that I have, the, the video that I have here on YouTube in my favorites, the announcer is openly saying something is wrong with Deontay Wilder's legs. Folks, that's serious. Right now, Wilder's interpretation of it, and sometimes the boxer's the last to know. Right? Wilder's interpretation of it is that his costume weighed too much. Costume weighed 40 pounds. He got in the ring, and he was tired. Right? Now, wow, tired by the third round? Look at his balance. Folks, something is wrong with his nervous system. It's not working together. Let's remember how the fight really ends. Mark Breland, who's been with Wilder, himself, one of the fighters of the 1980s, right? There is a Breland era in the 1980s there. 
right? Mark Breland pulls the plug, throws in the towel in a heavyweight title fight with his fighter unbeaten at the time. Now, I'm just telling you, Wilder's legs are finished. That's before the blood starts pouring out of his ear, right? His balance looks that bad. Let me tell you, as I watched the fight, I thought, you know what? Maybe this guy uh, got his balance completely blown, his ear messed up, and it threw off his balance and stuff like that. Well, here's the point I want to make to you. And Wilder, 34 years old. This is not a young guy who can heal quickly. Right? When your balance starts to go, people who follow baseball know what I'm saying. Right? When your balance starts to go and you start to lose coordination, right? I'm just telling you, that might not come back. Right? Father Time is really the only undefeated entity in boxing. These guys get hit in the head for a living. Wilder's balance is so off, he goes down off a body shot, and as you watch him, you didn't really get the feeling he could move out of the way of what Fury's doing. Now, don't get me wrong. It's hidden a little bit by the fact that Fury moves well and Fury is a master at roughing you up between punches. I know it looks coincidental, right? You know, uh, Wilder's head's under Fury's arm and stuff like that. I'm just telling you, the guys who know how to do it, Vladimir Klitschko against Alexander Povetkin, George Foreman in several fights, Lennox Lewis, look, revisit the Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko fight, which I have in my favorites here. And you're going to notice there's a hell of a lot of wrestling in that fight between punches. And both of those guys could punch. Right? You'll notice Fury roughing up Wilder. But importantly, even when Fury's not roughing up Wilder, you know, having Wilder's head under his underarm, having his forearm up on the back of Wilder's head. Just understand, Wilder is not moving well. He's not moving well at all, and it's too early in the fight for that. Right? Dare I say, his movement looks reduced. Like Roy Jones's movement looked reduced after Jones got KO'd. Right, so, I know you were offered spectacular odds for Tyson Fury for the rematch, looking back in hindsight, right? Fury looks like he's the better boxer than Wilder. Moves much better than Wilder. Is ambidextrous, right? Figured out the right hand, Wilder's right hand was not a factor in the fight, right? Fury seems to have that time. Fury even showed you he was the better fighter inside, could collapse the pocket on Wilder. But yet, the odds were close for their rematch. Well, now, the odds aren't that close. It's a plus 270. Well, put it this way. You have to pay like a minus 270 or minus 300 to be on the Tyson Fury side of the aisle. As I see it, that's free money. Right? Wilder... I believe, might not even be competitive anymore against Tyson Fury, right? Wilder might not be competitive anymore against Anthony Joshua. I'm that concerned about his legs, right? Again, sometimes the fighter's the last to know. One of the big myths in boxing is the idea of, oh, he just had an off night. Now, some nights it's true, right? I'm a big believer in Erickson Lubin. I saw him get KO'd in the first round by, I believe it was Jamel Charlo, right? Lubin looked completely ready to go. Lubin gets hit with a shot on the side of the head that he doesn't see. Lubin is out, right? I don't think Lubin is going to have coordination problems his next fight. We'll see, right? Lubin has looked good. But, 
Fighters who are a little bit older, where you're watching the fight and you don't really see the big punch that would cause the guy to be uncoordinated. Right? Wilder Fury wasn't exactly Hagler Herms. It wasn't like Fury hits Wilder with some huge shots and then Wilder's legs look shaky. That's not the fight I saw. The fight I saw was a tense fight early. Didn't feature a lot of home run shots. And then suddenly Wilder looked like as he got tired, he couldn't stand up right. Right? Boxing's a tough business. Understand. I'm just a guy here on YouTube. I'm positive that punchers facing Wilder, right? Joshua, for example, has to be looking at that Fury film and saying, okay, okay, I'll take my chance against this guy. I'll push the envelope against this guy. Wilder doesn't really move much in the preceding fight against Luis Ortiz. Right here, he's forced to move a little bit and his legs look uncoordinated. Right? This is no different than baseball where baseball is very statistical. You notice the guy's getting older and suddenly that batting average starts to drop a little bit. He's a little bit slow in getting around on fastballs. Right? Again, age catches up to all of us. At first you think, oh, does he have an injury? You know, is he up there with a pulled ribcage or something like that and he's hiding it from the public? and Or is he just in a slump and stuff? Then that slump lingers a few months. Then you start realizing the guy's a different player. Right? Deontay Wilder like Roy Jones, was undefeated, undefeated, until this surfaced, right? Roy Jones, for those who remember, after he fights Tarver, he fights Glenn Johnson, right? Gets blown out in that fight. Isn't the same fighter, doesn't look like Roy Jones before the knockout. Jones gets stopped in that fight. Right? Don't get me wrong. Jones has some moments later in his career, but you notice the rematch when he fights Bernard Hopkins. You notice that it's a different fight than the first fight. The first fight, Jones is just too physical. Right, He moves too well. Hopkins can't catch up with him. The second fight, Hopkins has caught up with him. Hopkins is roughing him up. Right, so forgive me, but I believe the jury is still out on whether Deontay Wilder is still Deontay Wilder. Now, this is boxing. You know there's going to be trash talk. You know that. So, of course, Tyson Fury is saying, oh, gee, I'm surprised he wants a third fight. It must be for the money. Right? It's my understanding Deontay Wilder is very well off financially. He has some big hitters behind him. People like Shelly Finkel, right? Al Heyman behind him. I'm sure that financially he's doing okay. But I do believe that he probably thinks it was the costume. That he entered the ring and oh, his legs were just a little bit flat that night. He just didn't have it that night. It was an off night. Right? What he might find out is that he's a 34-year-old who no longer has the coordination that he had when he was younger. That the sport takes a toll on fighters. Right? Sometimes it's not even the punch in the fight you're in. Sometimes it's just wear and tear. It's like tread on a tire. Sometimes it's just all the wear and tear that you suffered in public fights, sometimes in private training. Right, so the odds on Tyson Fury, which predict that Fury would win three out of four, that fight's still mispriced. Fury's one of the best in boxing pound for pound. Right, go to boxrec.com and look at their rankings. Right, Fury has been in the ring now, two fights, 
against Wilder. He's not going to be surprised by the angles of Wilder's right hand. But most importantly, Wilder can't, even though Wilder can go on his back foot against potted plants, right, remains to Vern. He can't go on his back foot against Tyson Fury. Both guys know it. And he might not have the stamina. As his body gets tired, his legs might not hold up. Right, let me tell you, when I was a kid, my dad kept telling me about Willie Mays. We would watch the All-Star game together. This is early 70s. And, you know, when Willie Mays came to the plate, and Mays played for the San Francisco Giants at the time. He wasn't a New York Met. And I was in New York. My dad was a Met fan, right? When Willie Mays came to the plate, my dad would say, Willie Mays, Willie Mays. So in 73, Willie Mays got traded to the Mets. Understand, that was spectacular because the Mets made the World Series that year. People forget that. <laughs> Mets were in the World Series in 73. It was a long World Series. Well, I'll just say this. Willie Mays down the stretch, my dad and I would watch some games, and he'd be talking up Willie Mays. And Willie wasn't Willie anymore. Right? He wasn't the guy. This was Mays back in New York. Right? He had been a New York Giant. Now he's back as a Met. The fans loved him. We all wanted to see Willie Mays show us his greatness. He was past his expiration date. The reflexes weren't there. Reflexes are odd. Right? They'll start to dim. You won't even notice it at first. Willie, at one point, they hit a ball to Mays in center field. Right? Willie Mays used to be the gold standard in center field. Right? You know, you hear about, you research all these Willie Mays stories, the Vic Wirtz catch and stuff like that. Willie's one of baseball's legendary center fielders. Willie lost the ball in the sun wasn't within the area code of where that ball hit the turf right Mays seemed like an older guy out there the reflexes weren't there the only thing that was the same was the name right now Deontay Wilder I know I know dramatic highlights that Dominique Brazil fight indelible memory, right? First round KO. The Audley Harrison fight, spectacular. First round KO. Both Luis Ortiz fights, when Ortiz starts hitting the canvas in the first fight, it's jarring. The second fight, looks like Ortiz is running away with it. Then he goes from 60 to zero, right? Hits the canvas. What I want you to do is to look at Deontay Wilder's legs. In the comment section of this video, tell me when you first thought to yourself that something was wrong with Wilder's legs. Right? If viewers to this video see a lot of first, second, and third rounds, right? If something's wrong with his legs, if he enters the ring coordinated and is uncoordinated by the second and third round, right, in a fight where, let's just say, Tyson Fury doesn't look like he's doing anything that dramatic in terms of landing power shots. In other words, this is not Marvis Fraser against Mike Tyson. Right? If Wilder looks uncoordinated, before his ear starts bleeding, we got problems, in my opinion, right? That's the kind of thing that a gambler needs to think about. When they look at a bet and they say, gee, can Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder three out of four times? I know casual fans are going to say, oh, the first fight was a draw. And, oh, it must have been his costume entering the ring, right? Let's think harder than that. Right? I think the answer is yes. I think Wilder at this point has to prove to us that he's still Deontay Wilder. 
right? The past doesn't matter when you're no longer able to do what you did in the past. I have serious concerns about Deontay Wilder's legs and his coordination and his age. Let me say too, that I saw a report that he had a surgery on his bicep. Think about that, from his left hand. And I'm just thinking, wow, if he can't jab to keep off Tyson Fury, not that it was successful in their second fight, but if he has a problem with his left hand, and if his legs were this bad, that his own corner threw in the towel on his unbeaten record with him being a title holder at the time. Why is the third fight going to be that much different? Let me just say too, after that fight, Wilder has a decision to make. Because if his legs are gone, and you notice it in the third fight, he won't have a big chance against an Anthony Joshua. In other words, he has power in that right hand while he's rested, while he's coordinated. If his coordination is going to diminish as the fight progresses, and I believe that's going to be the assumption of both Fury and Joshua, right? If his coordination diminishes as the fight progresses, then you're going to have guys in there, you know, trying to keep him busy early, staying away from his right hand early. His left hand now has been surgically repaired. It wasn't a KO punch before. Is it going to be one now? Right? And the feeling is, with his legs looking uncoordinated, does he have a back foot, even against the guys who don't move? as well as Tyson Fury, right? Let me also say too, if you've been the heavyweight champion for five years, if you've defended the title something like 10 times, right? Then you're really at this stage in your 30s only interested in the big fights, right? In other words, I don't see Deontay Wilder deciding should he lose to Tyson Fury. You know what? I'm not going to fight Joshua. I'm going to fight. I'm going to rebuild my name by fighting lesser fighters and work my way back up. I don't see that happening. He's already tasted the champagne. He's already gotten the big money. If Deontay Wilder is at your town square, you're going to hear about it. People are going to recognize him. Right? Your neighbor's going to say, guess who I saw? I saw Deontay Wilder. Everyone's going to know who he is. Even mom, who hardly follows boxing. Right? So understand the position he's in. If he's going to continue fighting, the only fights worth having would be a fight against, let's say, an Anthony Joshua. Guys who've held the belt. Guys who can generate box office. But these will be the very guys who have punching power to hurt him that much more. Right? This might be a Roy Jones story unfolding where we remember back to when the guy was on top. But we realize that those days are in the rearview mirror. That's how I see it. Obviously, I like Fury in the third fight against... Um, against Deontay Wilder. More importantly, I like Joshua against Wilder. Right now, more than ever. Simply because Joshua may have been embarrassed by Andy Ruiz, but he looks healthy. Right? By contrast, Deontay Wilder, ooh, I'm concerned. I'm very concerned about his legs and his inability to stop Fury from, you know, bullying him backward, grappling him and stuff like that. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.